Good morning. Welcome to the Corps of Engineers Veterans Trail. This is a unique project to the Corps of Engineers projects in the United States. In fact, what we have here is the Corville Projects Veterans Trail is the only veterans trail in the whole system of the Corps of Engineer uh, Park System. This uh, trail was developed in actually 1987 and was designed to be a handicap accessible trail. After the completion of the trail, they decided they'd like to do something with it and took some ideas from several of us and uh, we did ultimately end up saying, let's dedicate portions of this trail to certain veterans in the Johnson County, Iowa area. So we did that and our first trail dedication was in 1989 and we settled on Memorial Day as a fitting time to do that. So Memorial Day of 1989, we put our first nominee on the trail. And as we go through the trail, we'll discuss the various points and the various people that we have established on certain areas of this trail. So follow me and we'll proceed to do that. In about 2004, I'd had a long period of time and I wondered how many people in Johnson County had actually sacrificed during all the wars. Iowa had become a state in 1846 and I'd, I took a study and it did took quite a bit of research and I discovered that we lost 462 personnel in, from Johnson County, Iowa during all of the conflicts this country's been in. It started out with the Civil War. We lost 262 people which we have designated here by uh, war and we got the names of all of the people that had sacrificed. There were 262, as I said, in the Civil War. In the Spanish-American War, we didn't lose anyone from Johnson County, but in World War I, we lost 38. Of that 38, only five were killed in combat. The rest died of the Spanish flu epidemic and pneumonia and so forth, the causes of the after effects of the flu. In World War II, we lost 104. All of those were combat deaths. And as I say, they're all listed by name. There were two women killed in World War II. One was a WASP pilot and died when she was ferrying a B-17 over to England. And the other one was a gal that uh, was killed in the Pacific as a, as a nurse and the Japanese artillery got her. In Korea, we lost 10, all battle deaths. In Vietnam, we actually lost 13. Uh, all battle deaths and Afghanistan and Iraq we have lost two and hopefully that's going to be the end of it. The thing that's noteworthy about this study and I learned a lot when I did it is in the Civil War you can see we had a lot of deaths. A lot of them were from disease and, and amputation uh, after effects but you can see the progress medicine has made over the years and see that it went from not any deaths from disease to mostly all wounds from where it was and starting in the Civil War. So medicine has made a great, great progress in uh, helping keep our people alive. So we did this as just kind of an idea. School people can come up here. A lot of people come up here now and they chase, chase out their ancestry. And uh, it's, it turned out to be a real interesting study. So we thought this was a fitting place to start the trail. We have here, we're not in a sequence of order how we put people on, but we have here stones commemorating the names we've placed from 2005 to what will be placed here on 2014. There's several noteworthy people uh, we put on here. Everybody that's been put on this trail has got a Purple Heart or higher award since uh, uh, 1994. Uh, prior to that, we didn't have a criteria, we just kind of took nominations, but we decided to do a criteria, so we kind of had a distinction of who, who really qualified to be on. And that really clarified things very well. Uh, in 2005, we had uh, Danny Curtis as a Vietnam veteran, and he got the Purple Heart and, and Bronze Star. Uh, Clarence Haishu was a, a B-17 pilot, Regan Walter was in the infantry in the Pacific uh, on the islands. Uh, several noteworthy people that really had high honors. Jerry Ambrose in 2009 got the Navy Cross uh, as, as, uh, in the Vietnam War. Michael Bombay was also, he was in the Riverine Force in, in, in uh, Vietnam. We had uh, Double Hazeltine was a B-17 navigator. 
and his plane on his last mission before they came home when they landed they counted 137 bullet holes in the B-17 and not one of the crew got hit so it was very very interesting uh, interesting stories on each and every one of these we won't take the time to go through all of them but I'll try to just kind of highlight some of them as, we, as we're going through them here uh, Jim Deegan was a Vietnam pilot uh, army pilot but he flew the Marines out of Da Nang uh, he was a classmate of mine in uh, 1956. So that's pretty much on that side. Here we have uh, Todd Jacobus. He's a uh, battalion commander of an engineer battalion that was in Iraq in 2005, and they actually worked for the Marines in Ramadi. Uh, Palmer Holden was in uh, Vietnam, uh, become a professor at Iowa State University. So this is just a sampling of some of the people that we've had, and we'll describe more as we go uh, through the rest of the trail. This overlook it was done in 1991, and it honored our uh, Congressional Medal of Honor winner, Ralph Neppel, who lived here in Iowa City after the war and worked for the Veterans Administration Hospital until he retired. Ralph uh, was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor when he and his squad had just crossed the border into Germany and they'd taken up a fighting position inside a stone house. Ralph took his machine gun, he was a 30 caliber machine gunner, and positioned himself in front of the house. A German Panzer tank come around a bend just uh, about 300 yards from the house, turned and they spotted Ralph in his position and they lowered the 88 uh, caliber cannon on the tank, fired, hit Ralph, and blew him out of his foxhole and severed both of his legs. Ralph managed to crawl back to his fighting position and he used the machine gun to get rid of the infantry that was supporting the tank and uh, dispersed the tank. And of course the Germans, when they lost their infantry support for a tank, they immediately left the area. So Ralph's actions, saved the whole squad, the rest of his squad, which was holed up in the house. And so they managed to escape the, the Germans. But Ralph spent a lot of years in uh, rehabilitation, came to Iowa City in 1952 and worked here at the Veterans Administration Hospital. And he was a great asset to, to all of the wounded vets because of the handicaps that he had overcome and the, just the spirit that he had. So we were really, really uh, honored to have Ralph be put on this position. This stone commemorates the veterans that we honored in 2002, 2003, and 2004. We have a mix here of World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and Desert Storm veterans in, on this uh, stone. We have uh, Ted Spivey, who's from Tiffin, Iowa, served uh, almost four years in the Army. He uh, was in a tank destroyer outfit. He, he was awarded the Silver Star, two Bronze Stars, three Purple Hearts for his service. He went into North Africa in 1942. They made the Salerno Beach landings. They were at Anzio, and they were pulled out, and they refit, and they actually made the D-Day landings in Normandy in uh, 1944, June, June 6th. Uh, he got wounded then. Uh, they took him out of action in the Hurtgen Forest in November of 1944. Steve Winnicky was a Desert Storm veteran. He uh, led a National Guard ambulance unit in uh, Desert Storm. Bob Williams was a Vietnam Navy fighter pilot. In 2003, just to point out a few, we had Merle Nievenhaven, was an infantryman in Korea, was on the Imjin River. Charles Playmile spent 34 years in the Army in Vietnam and Desert Storm. Uh, Donald Sh Ronald Shump was a World War II veteran. In 2004, to point out a couple of people, we have Bill Peterson, who is a Marine in Vietnam. He was a company commander. Charles Pratt was wounded in Korea in uh, 1951. And Pat Zinishek was a Marine who served in Vietnam and was wounded in 1968.
Okay, in 1994, we dedicated this rest area and we honored a group of brothers, the Seidels. Uh, there was Ed, Earl, Guy, John, Donald, Lyle, and Robert. They all served in the Army except for Robert who served in the Navy. Uh, they they uh, had quite a tour of duty. Earl joined the National Guard, was in the 113th Recon, and served from Normandy all the way to meeting the Russians on the Elbe. He was awarded the Purple Heart for uh, wounds received in action. Uh, Lyle was a Vietnam vet also, and uh, retired after Vietnam, and he was awarded the Legion of Merit for his service. This stone commemorates those that we honored from 1997, 98, 1999, 2000, and 2001. Again, we have a mix of World War II, Korea, and Vietnam veterans on these stones. Uh, Donald Branneman in 1997 was placed here. He's a Solon Iowa native, and he served in a unique uh, unit called the a Naval Armed Guard. The Navy uh, had not put people on the Liberty ships that were sending uh, supplies and so forth to Europe in the Lend-Lease program. Well, they were getting so many of them torpedoed and was losing so much that they decided to put a five-man team of Navy personnel with a five-inch gun and a 50 caliber machine gun on these merchant ships. Well, that's helped uh, prevent a lot of the submarines from torpedoing a lot of supply ships. And Don made several runs to Murmansk, Russia leaving uh, the east coast of the United States with, with supplies. He's still with us today, and uh, he, like I said, he's very unique in, in the country because there were not very many of those uh, sailors left. In 1999, we have Harry Eister, who was one of the first paratroopers that was in the first parachute unit that was formed in 1942, and he jumped into Italy. He was at Anzio. He was in southern France, and they also pulled him out, and he uh, tried to relieve Bastogne when uh, the Battle of the Bulge broke out. In uh, 1998, we honored Richard C. Martin as one of the people on that, on that year group. Richard was the son of a United States Senator from Iowa, but Richard served as a first lieutenant in the Army in, in Korea. Howard Stock was a Lone Tree Iowa native. He was captured, he was a prisoner of war, from the uh, period of 1944 to the release in 1945. 2001, we had Jack Baranek, John Baranek, and he was an infantryman and he won a battlefield commission in Europe in 1944. Bernie Collins was an aviator, flew in uh, Vietnam, was highly decorated. Leo Embry was another one of our highly decorated uh, paratroopers. Uh, actually was a member of Easy Company, if you all watched the band The Brothers. Uh, Leo said he spent all those years, but he said the worst was Bastogne. He says after that he made darn sure he got enough clothes on and he got enough to eat, because he said he was short of both during the Battle of Bastogne. Uh, we have Earl Sheets in 2000 we put on, and Earl was a uh, Tra air traffic controller in the Pacific and he had a marine pilot come in and his plane was shot up and he crashed when he landed and slid over into an ammo dump and Earl jumped out of the tower and run out and pulled that pilot out of that plane just prior to that whole complex exploding and was awarded the Bronze Star for his action there. So that's just a few of the people that we put on, uh, on those years. This is uh, another unique area that we uh, dedicated in uh, 1990. Richard Pilicek was an infantryman, and they were, he was in the 9th Division. Of, uh, well, he's actually in the 83rd Division when the 9th found the only intact bridge across the Rhine River, Remagen. So they sent a unit across to secure the far shore. Dick was one of the lucky few that got across there. 
And then they needed enough people to help repair the bridge. They didn't have enough engineers, so they turned Dick into an engineer to help repair the bridge to keep it open as long as they could to get as many people across as possible. Well, the Germans started uh, dive bombing it with airplanes, and they also put a lot of artillery on this bridge. And as a result, Richard lost the lower right hand leg and, and uh, also part of his right eye as a result of their, uh, their hits. So uh, we thought when they put this bridge in that this would be a very fitting person to dedicate this bridge to. Dick stayed with us and passed away, unfortunately, here in the summer here of 2013. So it was a real, lo real loss to us because Dick was a very fine gentleman and, and served our country well. This was our first project that we dedicated in 1989. We named it after a triple amputee as a result of wounds he received in Vietnam for Daniel Vicroy. Uh, Dan uh, unfortunately got hit by a uh, Claymore mine that uh, took both of his legs and part of his right arm. So Dan uh, also spent a lot of time in the VA hospital and was with us Fortunately, when we dedicated, he passed away several years ago, unfortunately, but uh, this was our very first dedication and uh, a very worthy, worthy candidate to start our, start our trail with. This observation point was dedicated in 1996, and there are several notable people that we have on here. We started out with uh, William Tucker, who is a well-known attorney here in the Iowa City area. He uh, flew uh, P-47s, World War II, and Bill's favorite story was he was shot down on the invasion of Normandy on D-Day, 6th of June, in the morning, and they picked him up, and they took him back to England, and he said they put me in another P-47 before they could even get the sand out of his shoes. Phil Weinstein was awarded the Purple Heart in Vietnam as a medic, uh, served with the Navy. Richard Grell was a first sergeant, uh, Vietnam. Uh, William Bach was a World War II fellow. Uh, Bob Crandall was a B-17 pilot, was shot down in 1943 over Germany and spent the rest of the war as a POW. Bill Meerden was a Navy pilot who also was an attorney here in Iowa City, and he flew Navy A-6s covering the invasion of Normandy on D-Day. So it was interesting that we have two attorneys in Iowa City that flew at the same time, same place, but yet they never met each other till after the war. We have the Cox brothers who all served in the Army uh, during World War II, and they were very instrumental in helping us here doing various things when we were designing and dedicating this trail. This portion of the trail was dedicated in 1995 and we have again a mix of uh, people that served uh, from Johnson County. Uh, to lead off we have Fred Hahn who was a tank commander and was hit outside of St. Lowe and was awarded the Silver Star for his actions in saving his crew. Robert Watkins was a Navy lieutenant who served in the Pacific. Juanita Stubbs was one of our, I think our only female in World War II that we have on the trail. And she was an Army nurse that was stationed in the Philippines and she actually worked for Charles Mayo, who was one of the instrumental Mayos that started the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. We had George Niederheiser, who was captured outside of St. Lowe. It was a POW for three days, and they decided they didn't want prisoners anymore, so they lined he and the rest of his squad up along the edge of the road, and they attempted to assassinate him. And George was severely wounded, but he did survive that battle and spent two and a half years in rehab as a result. Martin Dvorak was one of our uh, Pearl Harbor survivors. Uh, and then we have the Vilhauer brothers, who all served in the, in the Navy. And there was, let's see, there was one, two, three, four, five, there were six Vilhauer brothers, all dedicated and served during World War II.
This area was named after Ray Camel, and we dedicated this area in 1962. Uh, Ray enlisted in the Navy in September of 1940 and was severely wounded when a ship that he was on in the Pacific was attacked by kamikaze pilots. Uh, Ray survived uh, his wounds and spent many years, the rest of his life, in fact, here in the, in the Johnson County area. My name is Jeffrey Peck. I work for the Army Corps of Engineers as a natural resource specialist slash ranger. In 2009, we actually dedicated this bench to Major General Robert L. Sentman for his two Legion of Merits that he achieved while serving with the United States Army. He's highly qualified, but never once wanted to be honored on the trail because in his own words, he always said, you never give yourself your own prize. Major General Sentman has been the driving force for the Veterans Trail since 1989 and the conception of this trail and for 25 years. He's personally nominated over half of the individuals that are honored on this trail and without him, this trail would not exist or be what it is today. This rest area was dedicated in 1993 and we honored William Doherty. Bill uh, was one of the people that served as an enlisted man in the Pacific and in 1942 they brought him back and sent him to what I call charm school, officer candidate school at Fort Benning, Georgia. And he was commissioned a second lieutenant and was shipped to England and then into France just in time to take part in the Battle of the Bulge. Unfortunately, Bill was captured along with many thousand others in, uh, in the Bulge and spent five and a half years or months as a prisoner of war of the guests of the Germans, if you will. Bill, after the war, came back and he also was one of the first gentlemen that helped start up and run the VA and he worked with the VA until his retirement. Bill also was very instrumental in helping here on the Veterans Trail and several meetings that we had and so on and so forth. And he uh, kept very close touch with veterans and served the veterans exclusively throughout the rest of his lifetime. Well, this concludes our tour of our Veterans Trail. Uh, this is, like I say, a very unique trail in, in this part of the country and it's also the, unique to the Corps of Engineers. We get visitors here from all over the United States, unbelievably, uh, that come through at all times of year. I've been here in the winter time when there's no one else around, but there'll be people coming through to either look up rallies or in some cases just interested in the people and their stories. We talked a little about some of the people. We didn't, we've got stories on every person that's been put on this trail, but in brevity, we just talked of a few here today. This trail is supported pretty much by donations from the public. Uh, people have been really good about donating and keeping our facilities up to shape and we appreciate any further contributions that any of you would be willing to make. It's a very worthwhile cause and it honors those who gave us so much and they offered so little to do to, of themselves. You know, they, they put country first and that's really what we're trying to do here is to propagate that memory of those people who have served our country and served it well. So thank you all for coming and uh, enjoy your tour.